Oh, hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about a topic that many of you love near and dear to your hearts. Some of you uh, may not even heard of it though. Today we're gonna to talk about Yixing Zisha teapots. Um, if you're new to the channel, hey, I'm Phil from Gen Tea. We specialize in tasting grade Chinese tea and on our YouTube channel here, we cover things like tea travel, um, tea accessories like we're talking about today, how to brew and much, much more. So if this interests you, consider subscribing to our channel and let's dive in to the fascinating world of Yixing teapots. What is a Yixing Zisha teapot? Well, it's one of these guys. No, what is a Yixing? So for those of you that are new to tea or new to Yixing Zisha teapot, what is a Yixing Zisha teapot? It is a teapot made from a special kind of clay from a region called Yixing from Jiangsu province. So um, that's sort of the simplest way to say it. You might hear them called Yixing teapot. You might hear them called Zisha teapot. They're, or you might hear them called Yixing Zisha teapot. All of those names are fine. They're all fundamentally the same thing. So Yixing is the place it's from in Jiangsu and Zisha translated just means purple clay. Don't be fooled by the name purple clay. Some of them will be purplish in color. This is maybe not the best rendition of purple. Let me find a cuter one that's purplish. But they can be all different colors. It really depends on the specific style of clay used. Still a Yixing Zisha teapot. So there you go. That's your primer into the basics of the name. Another good thing to know about Yixing Zisha teapot is this style of pottery. It's not just any other kind of clay. This specific style of clay has properties and composition that make it really great for uh, many things and especially for tea. It may surprise some of you to know that the history of Yixing pottery in that region goes back over 7,000 years in history. When I learned that, it frankly blew my mind. Um, that's not to say that these cute little teapots were around at that time, but the history of pottery in that region goes back that far. Pretty amazing. Fast forward to about a thousand years ago and we're getting into the sort of discovery and proliferation, the proliferation of the use of Zisha clay itself, that special clay that we now know and love in our teapots. The Ming Qing era is the time where we get really interested because this is where the concept, the whole concept of a teapot was actually introduced. So um, at that time the teapots were by when we're talking about Yixing Zisha teapot, they were large, but these were considered small teapots at the time. And this is the time tea began to proliferate around the world and the notion of teapot was exported with the tea. Quick explanation here. Yixing is the birthplace of this uh, teapot shape. When it was first invented, the volume is actually quite different very big compared to today's uh, Yixing Zisha teapot. Now we often talk about the Zisha teapot compared to Western style teapot to imply this kind of size different. In the early stage of Yixing Zisha teapot, what people at that time considered as a small teapot is actually about the size as the current Western teapot. As a matter of fact, that's around the time that tea and teapot were exported to Europe. So what we call Western teapot today actually gives us a sneak peek of the size of the teapots in the Ming Dynasty. And what's more impactful for today's talk about teapots is in the 70s, as mainland China opened up, merchants from Hong Kong and Taiwan revitalized the teapot culture around Yixing Zisha teapots. So what is it that makes this Zisha clay from Yixing so awesome? Well, one very important property is its slow conduction of heat. But what does this really mean? Well, for one, it means that the water stays hot because the teapot isn't pulling the heat out of it. 
Another great thing for us as tea brewers is it means the teapot doesn't get hot as fast and our fingers don't get burnt as easily. Very important as far as I'm concerned. How many of you can pour boiling water on your hand and not even blink? That is not a skill I want to get better at. Another characteristic of this fascinating clay might not seem very spectacular in today's world where we're surrounded by things like tempered glass and metals coated with fancy ceramic coatings and whatnot, but that is its ability to endure drastic temperature change. Now, if you think about that in the context of how historic these teapots and this style of clay and pottery is, that's actually profoundly useful. And even for ourselves in our modern day times, we found it useful. For example, we sometimes go out and brew tea. We, we brew tea in the snow, which is a little bit weird and fun. But, you know, for social media or whatever, we'll be brewing. Uh, we'll have a teapot in the snow and make some pretty pictures. And we've even had people comment and say, aren't you worried the teapot is going to shatter? And honestly, it never even crossed our mind because this material is so resilient to temperature change. We just, we've never had an issue with it and it never has been an issue and hopefully it will never be an issue. A key characteristic of the Yixing teapot for us tea lovers is its ability to maintain the flavor of the tea, even during a long steep. As well, its unique dual porous structure actually prolongs the life of brewed tea. What does this mean? Well, it's never happened to me but if you've ever forgotten the tea in your teapot for a day or two and come back to it thinking your teapot was empty and ready to go and discovered there's tea in it, it's not moldy as quick. Perhaps you might even want to do an experiment. Throw some tea in a gaiwan and some brewed tea, brewed leaf, wet, humid brewed leaf in a gaiwan and in a teapot and let them sit for a few days. The teapot will last longer. It won't get moldy as quickly. So again, these points in the modern world might seem almost trivial, but if you take yourself back a hundred years and you've got a choice of a yeasting teapot to brew your tea or an iron teapot, which may have, may have the taste of rust, it may not be in perfect condition, you can see that not only the flavor, but the retention of heat, all of these properties really add up for a much more pleasant experience so much so that even today we still treasure this device. Similar with, similar with the prolonged life of the tea. Nowadays we have refrigerators, we have saran wrap, but this, the, this is almost a magical characteristic if you put yourself in the context of somebody from, um, from old times, from long, long ago. An interesting and quirky feature of using is its Hmm, how do I say this? Young ability. It's ability to be young. Um, what does this mean? It means if you treat your teapot with a little bit of tender loving care, you give it a rub with a tea cloth or even with your, with your hand, it will develop a beautiful patina, a beautiful sheen or a shine. And the more you give it this affectionate treatment, the better this shine will get. Um, this is what is known as young. And uh, this is a wonderful characteristic that is treasured in Chinese culture. Uh, materials like jade or exotic woods also exhibit this, are also treasured. And it's a beautiful metaphor for taking care of something and being rewarded for that discipline, I think. It's a really sort of quirky and beautiful aspect of using teapots, really. And the more you use your teapot and give it young, the teapot, when you put hot water in it, will pick up some of the gentle flavor of the tea that you brew in that teapot. It will sort of infuse with the flavor of the tea, as well as the value of the teapot might become more. I hope this talk about Yi Sing Zisha teapots has been interesting and informative. We touched on a lot of topics, many of which are fascinating and could be a video of their own. If there's more you want to know about Yixing Zisha teapots, leave a comment down below. And also, let me know, do you have a teapot? Do you have two? Do you have a hundred? They're super addictive, so I wouldn't be surprised if a few of you do. What's your favorite shape? Leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. If you're a fan of Chinese tea, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you'll know whenever we make a new video. And until next time, 
yeah, keep steeping. 